Hi, my name is Vijay Nagarajan. Today I'm going to teach you how to create an is prime. So an is prime is you enter a number, an integer. Um, so you enter the integer. The integer we have, let's say, is 9. Okay, we enter 9. Now, it now the computer will do some, will do the, run the code, run the run some code, and C is 9 prime and composite. This is a basic code for people who are learning the basics of Python. So we'll see nine is prime or composite. Before you start, you should know one thing, the difference between a composite and a prime number and what is which. So a prime number is any integer and an integer is just any number that is not a decimal. So it could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Prime is any integer that um, that has only one and itself as, as factors. And then composite, well, has factors are one itself and other numbers. So the every even number is a composite number. I mean, every even number is a composite number besides two. Because two only has two and one as its factors. One and zero are neither composite, neither compo neither composite nor prime. Negative one, negative two, negative three. And as prime, we're not dealing with negative numbers. We only want to deal with positive numbers. Okay? Only dealing with positive numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off the web by importing something. So we're going to import something called math. Okay, we import this. Math, so when you import something in Python, it allows you to do some things with, with that you cannot do when you haven't, when you don't import anything. So this imports math. Math allows us to deal with a lot of different stuff with numbers. It allows us to basically round something. That's one of the things you can do with when you import math. So we're gonna call a variable, we're gonna call it n because n stands for number. Now you can call this variable anything, you can call it dog. But you wanna make sure your variable kinda of has a relation to what it means. Because if you have a variable called dog and then you show someone this code, they're like, what is dog? What, what does that mean? But if you put like an, something that makes sense, sometimes different, sometimes they use different variables for different cases. So n, stands for number in this case so i'm doing n you can do x x is a very commonly used thing for variables at y is also used a b all the letters are, you can use i'm gonna be using n here today uh and yeah so we're gonna do n and we're gonna do an input an input is basically you uh it asks you a question it tells you to enter something enter it and then we're keeping a variable so we can store the data and store the answer. So we have an input, and what I'm going to do is so that you can, so that winter floats and not number B. But anyway, warning, but I thought it was just integers. And it is. So we technically can just int it. So that means if you don't enter an integer, we'll say it's an error. You can't enter that, and the code will work, so you have to enter an integer. And we're going to run this. We're going to say, enter an integer above zero. Now, even if they, this is just a string, they don't, it doesn't have any relation to the code, but what it does, it just, it's a way for the reader or, or the user to understand what it understand oh this is what i have to do but if they don't do it that's gonna, it's like if i take out this int 
thing, this int thing, and they don't enter an integer, that's per the code's not going to break down. Now, we're, uh, we, we said, but if they enter a negative number, we can't do anything about it. So we're going to create an if statement that way. It'll convert it to a positive number. So if n is less than zero, it's gonna do this. If n is less than zero, it n is now equal to n times negative one. But probably like, why why multiply negative one? Negative one's negative number. Well if you know multiplication and you know how to work with negative numbers, you know a negative times a negative is a positive. So if n is less than zero, it's gonna say if n is less than zero, it's gonna run this if thing saying n. Well, yeah. Now we don't need an else if or an else because one more thing else is running. So we're gonna do some simple thing. We're gonna run. Let's see if it works. Enter an integer above zero. Now here's the thing, if I enter 9, it looks like it's saying 0, 9, so always do a space. That's what's good. It makes it look better. So run. And if I hit 9, it's not running anything because, well, there's nothing to run. It, it, this data is stored, it's not going to print anything. So to make sure it works, we like to print and see if it works. We're going to print n. Right nine, and it prints it. So everything's working. So after we, we can delete this print, now we're going to run a function. This function is when you write function in Python, it's def, and then you have to give the name to the function. We're going to call this function is prime. It checks if it is prime, and we're having a parameter. This parameter is going to be p. P does not stand for parameters in this case. I mean, it can. I'm right now saying P stands for prime. But yeah, it can stand for parameter. So we're going to call this variable outside right here. We're going to call the variable in here. So we're going to call this variable. And since this is an indentation language, indentation matters. This variable will be x. Now, again, you can call it anything. You can't call it n or is prime. Well, math, but yeah. Actually, we don't need to import math. I'm sorry. We do not need to import math. You can delete that line of code. You do not need to import math. Okay, sorry. Technically, now you can call it math, but I'll mess with Python because math is a function, built-in function. So don't call it math. Call it something like x or a. I'm going to call it x. In fact, actually, I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this f for factors. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a bracket, an array, basically. But there's nothing in the array. There's nothing in it. Okay. F stands for factors. Then we're going to run this for loop. For, and this is i, this value i, in range. So a range is, it'll give a range of two numbers. It runs, it keeps running through the for loop until it's done with the range. So we're going to do a range of two. Now that may seem a little weird. Why do a range of two? Well, the reason you do a range of two is when you do a range of two is because if it says one, it's going to think, oh, one, this is, this is, this is composite. But when really it's prime because, and then we're going to write n. You're just like, wait. Every number is divisible by itself. So is it going to think it's composite? Well, when you do range, it goes 2, 3, 4, and so n is 7. So it goes 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's not going to run at n. Then we're going to put our semicolon, our colon. We're going to put our colon, and then we indent. Then we're going to do this. F dot append. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to string it. So we're making i a string because when i is a string we don't want it as a number or else it's going to glitch i figured that out when, when i was creating this before i made the video i tried with the string and then without the string and it got a little crazy so we're going to keep it as a string f dot append 
And what we do as an F dollar penny, right? Running, what does this really mean? What what does it mean? Well, it's not meaning anything because this F dollar pen is in an if statement. I forgot to put it create the if statement. So if um x no if n i so what is equal equals zero then then it's gonna run this so if this if statement it will run f dot append i'm gonna explain each of these two and what this if statement really means this if statement is saying okay if n so if we're going along, so when if this, we run through this for loop, and then we go so when we when we run when this for loop runs, the if statement is going to run because that's what's in the for loop. The if statement is saying if n modulus one, which means is if we divide n and i, i is the range here. Divide n and i, i is the range, the number. So basically, when we run through, say our number is eight. N is eight. So we run i. Okay, we run i. Then i is right now two because we're, we always start. It starts off at two and it keeps going, right? So it starts off at two. Then it's going to run the if statement n, which is eight, modulus two. So it's if eight divided by two, and then it takes the remainder. So modulus is the remainder of the numbers divided. So it's n divided by i and takes the remainder. If the remainder equals zero. That means Means, that means uh, the number is prime. I mean, the number is composite because it divides evenly. Then we want to break, which means see if it has one thing that's two, it's going to be well itself. But you think, what if we enter two, right? Well, if we enter two, we're gonna do this. If first we're gonna write three, we're gonna write two ifs. Or like three ifs. If I like, and if we're gonna write if n equal equals zero or n equal equals one. As we know, these are neither prime nor composite, so we, we we're gonna do this. Okay, that's red. Don't worry. We're gonna print your number is not prime or composite okay then we're gonna do this do else elif n equal equals two your print Because two is prime. It's the only even number that's prime. Okay, then we're gonna do this else. In the in this for loop will run. Okay, now let's go through all the all the code in the function and I'm gonna explain it thoroughly. So we have our function is prime, we have, we have the parameter p. Then we have this f, which is an array, which is empty, and I'll show you what it's going in. This array is empty right now. Then we come down here. If n equals equals zero, or if n equals equals one, we know these numbers are in prime or composite, so we don't want to run the for loop. So we're gonna say this. We're gonna just gonna say this prime number is not prime or composite. Then we're gonna just elif. So if this is not true, we run this code. Elif n equal equals 2, which it means if n is 2, then it's prime, because it's going to divide 2 by 2, and it's going to be 1, and like, oh, that 2 is composite, because it divides evenly. We don't want that. Then we're going to do this else statement, okay? We have this else statement, so if any of these are true, run this. And this else statement is a for loop. And this is a for loop. And in this for loop, it's saying, we're going to keep running this, keep running this loop till the loop is done. So for i in range, which means 
i is in the range of 2 and n and and i and it'll keep changing now remember it starts with this 2 but actually ends at n minus 1 okay then we run this if statement that's what the for loop is n modulus i equal equals 0 which means if n divided by i if n divided by i and take the remainder of it, if the remainder of n divided by i is zero, we're going to add that number to here. Now, when we do f, it's not going to actually notice the factor. We don't care. We can even add one to this. But the reason we're adding the factor is just so that its length increases, and then you're going to see why. Then we break. Okay, if it doesn't, that's... I'm gonna write this else. Else. Okay. Then we're going to still be in the function, but out of this if. Then I'm gonna run this. We can create um, a new if. If len, that's the length, it means if the length of f is equal equal zero we're going to run this so basically if f if there's nothing in elf we're going to say it's prime because it is right so if there's nothing in f we're going to print prime but if n if there are something n so if the length of n is greater than zero, which means there is something in f, the length of f is greater than zero, there's something in f, then what we're going to do is we're going to write else, which is, right, else, we're going to print, composite. Now, the function, we create a function, but it's not going to run unless we call that function. So we're going to call is prime. But I'm going to put the P in there. The P is the parameter. We're going to replace that P with N. Okay, then we're going to run. Enter an integer above zero. So let's enter this integer is eight. Now we know eight is composite. And it, boom, composite. And see how quick it goes. Now let's enter nine. Composite, see? Now let's enter a prime number and try. Let's say our prime number is. Three is prime. Boom. Prime. Let's go over the code. I'm going to explain it one more time. And this will be a little less thorough, but it's going to give the same point of view. And we're going to go through the code. After this, try creating your own way. Try, you try, creating, your, try creating a different way. Uh, try creating in a different language. So we're going to start off. N is equal to this integer input. So it means the input has to be an integer. Then if n is greater than zero, and if n is less than zero, then n, so it means if n is a negative number, multiply by negative one, which will just make it the positive form, will make it the absolute value. Then we have this function, def is prime. This function, and then we have our parameter p, okay? So f is an array, but there's no, there's no value in the array. There's nothing in the array. We're on this if, so if n, or n from here, the value, if n equal equals zero, or if n is one. So if n is zero or one, we know neither, if n is zero or one, that means it's not prime or composite. So we wanna run that first. So if n is not zero or not, n is not zero and not one, we come to this elif, this next one, this other if. n equal equals two. That means if n is two, it's prime. The reason we write this code is because when we go to this else, it'll divide by two and say it's zero. And then like, oh, it's composite when really it isn't. So this is just to make sure if it's two, it's prime. Then we're on this else statement. So if neither of these are true, we go to here. This, if neither of these are true, this is true. So this is for everything that's not, that's neither of these. So then we're going to run this for loop. Okay, this for loop is saying 
We're calling this new variable i, and if i is in range to an n, this means if i is what this loop will keep running, and the value will change between two, three, four, so on till n, but it won't run n, which is good. Then we have the if statement. n so in this if statement, so it's n modulus i, which means if the remainder of n divided by i equals equals zero, it's composite because that means it divides properly. That means we're gonna add that to f, which means f now has value. There's something in that. Then we were gonna leave this so it so it stops running. Okay, it stops running. We don't we don't want to keep going because if we know it has one thing that's not itself and one, it's prime. I mean, it's composite. It is composite, so we can just leave. Okay. Then we come to this if statement. This is not in. The else. This is oh, this is a different if statement. This is saying if f has value, if it has length, if it has something in the array, it's composite. But this is saying this if saying if there is nothing in the array, it's prime. But if there is not nothing in the array, it's composite. Which is basically saying if there is nothing in the array, it's prime. If there is something in the array, it's composite. And then we run the function with instead of our parameter p, we write n. Now, like I said before, try creating your own version. Use, you can still use Python, just try to create a different way. Or maybe you can use my way, it doesn't matter. Maybe you'll try changing up a little bit. Uh, you can try, creating, try using a different language. Signing off, the Jnagarajan.